uh, he kind of comes out and goes, this is how it's fucking going down. And everybody goes, fucking A. You didn't even have time to think about what the fuck you were seeing. It was like, you're just a punch in the fucking head, you know? Like, you couldn't think about, oh, what is this? It was just like, wow, this is fucking awesome. And the whole place is fucking erupt, right? It's just the coolest thing I've ever seen at the time. With Shy's lyrics and even his style and his outlook, you never knew what we were going to pull stuff from. It was this sense of urgency and anger, and it was like nothing I'd ever seen before. I don't remember them having an off night, you know, where they didn't put out. The way not just an unbelievable punk band, but just a band, like better than any other kind of band that was playing at Edmonton. Rock band or folk band or any kind of band. Just that he was way better than everybody. The Epitaph signed them knowing Shy's charisma and the quality of the music and how good everybody in the band was. Having that exposure of Epitaph Records, I'm, you know, I just know that they rubbed off on a, a lot of other up-and-coming musicians. You could shit in a box, put S in if you want it, and someone would buy it. Some kid would buy it. It was just like, it was out of control. I mean, as far as like a true punk band goes, I think they, they pretty much got as far as you can get. They did it, you know? To me, that was like the light at the end of the tunnel for all punk bands in the 90s was Epitaph. Crystal meth appears to be just about the most addictive drug that's been invented so far. So people can become addicted very quickly, but you know, it's going to be different if they're using once a week or once a day or five times a day. You're going to see a different kind of decline, right? Well, I call it fixed. Given obviously the mental illness and given drug use and that kind of thing, it's pretty easy to find yourself down here on the streets. I think he's finally lost it, and I don't know if he's ever going to get it back. It was really, really a dark time for him, I can, I can only imagine. You know, the one staple thing that Chai's had in his life for the last two, two and a half decades was kind of gone. And everything was like total chaos, and nothing was in order. <laughs> I think he belongs on stage much more than walking the streets. No place for love.